this is our second podcast of our gases unit. So we are talking about another formula we have and looking at different relationships. We're at the top of page seven, and this is known as Dalton's Law. It's going to be some really hard math that the partial pressure, if you have Dalton's Law, important thing is talking about a mixture of gases. So we're assuming that there is no chemical reactions. And what we just, so pressure comes from gas molecules hitting the container. So if I have a mixture of gases, you just add up all the individual pressures and that is going to equal your total pressure. So that's what this formula is saying, that the pressure total is a pressure of from some substance A plus some substance B. This could be nitrogen and oxygen and helium key thing, you're putting gases together that aren't reacting. So the problems are literally going to look like this. You get different gases and it tells you what the partial pressure is. So your total pressure then is going to be the 35 atmospheres. So this is a pressure of oxygen plus the five atmospheres. This is the pressure from nitrogen. Notice that's what this means, the partial pressure and 25 atmospheres, this is the pressure of helium. So add it all together and you get a total pressure of 65 atmospheres. Told you it was hard. What sometimes we can, other ways we can ask, um, put this is I give you percentages and you can just figure out what percentage. So if it's 75 percentage of it comes from oxygen, then you just find out what is 75 percent. So if it was one atmosphere, 0.75 atmospheres would come from oxygen. So what if they give me the total pressure? So look at here, now I know my pressure total and what is in there? There's some carbon dioxide there is some hydrogen sulfide and the rest is just air. So what do we know? This total pressure is 0 0.99, 0 0.05 came from the carbon dioxide, 0 0.02 came from the H2S and so the rest is just the pressure of air. So this time you have to add and then subtract and the pressure from air then is 0.92 atmospheres. <clears throat> okay, a special case of this is we're going to start seeing when we say these magic three little words in lab and it's called collected over water. So when you see, a few years ago they started calling this cow, collected over water. Well think about a gas. If you're trying to collect a gas from a reaction, it's kind of tricky sometimes. So what we do, we take a test tube or something, graduate cylinder, you invert it, fill it up with water. Okay, this is all filled up with water. Then you put a tube inside here and now you're going to start bubbling gas. So what's going to happen and my graduated cylinder, it's going to start filling up. And so now this is just water and this is now your gas. So let's say we collected some oxygen. So now I have oxygen gas in here. Well, the gas bubbled up through the water. So guess what? We have a little bit of water in there too. So we just need to subtract out the pressure that's coming from the water vapor so I can have just the gas. So that's where this chart comes from. And if you look at it, it changes with the temperature. So the higher the temperature, the more, um, well, the easier it is for that water to go to a vapor. So you're going to have more water vapor. So when you're working something with this, you, it's going to give you a temperature. You need the temperature to use the chart. So you would know that this problem is either going to have to be given to you, the water vapor pressure is going to have to be given to you, or I have to give you a water vapor pressure table. 
Sometimes it's just given to you in the problem. So it says, I've collected, and see here's the words, collected over water. That means you have to do a pressure correction. So what do I have to do? The total pressure then, this is the total, is 756 millimeters of mercury. So what's the partial pressure of just the hydrogen? We need to subtract out then this total pressure was the pressure from the hydrogen and the pressure from the water. So I want just the hydrogen. So it's going to be the total pressure. And then we look right here. Here's the pressure at 20 degrees. And I know that because it's 20 degrees. That's what I looked for. So the water vapor pressure at 20 degrees is 17.5 millimeters of mercury. So we're going to take that little bit of pressure away. So the pressure of just hydrogen is 738.5 millimeters of mercury. OK, I want you to do number four. Uh, might have might need to go back and look at page two. No, excuse me, page three at some pressure conversions to kind of help you on that. That's my hint to you. Okay, let's turn, go past that worksheet. We're going to work on some of those in class. I wanted to look at our next formula. This is called the ideal gas law. Pivnert. Pressure, volume, okay, pressure and volume. Couple A. Volume must be in liters. In combined gas law, it didn't matter. Um, we'll talk about pressure for a second. N, same thing, number of moles. Temperature needs to be in Kelvin. Okay, a couple new things. R, on your formula chart that you get on these tests, you have R. It's a constant. Now look at the units. There's three different R's listed. One R, and this is why our units. This is why volume has to be in liters. Okay, we're going to use this R, 0 0.0821, if my pressure is given in atmosphere. And then you have to have moles and your temperature has to be in Kelvin. Now there's another R, 8.31. I would use this if my pressure is given in kPa. Then look at this one. I'm going to use this one if my pressure is given in millimeters in mercury. So when we first started this, I said we used to have to do pressure conversions because I would just make you memorize one R. So now since you have, you are given three R's, you just need to figure out which R to use. So it's really, again, just using a formula. So when we read these, what volume? Okay, this is my unknown. And I know my moles. Okay, what else do I know? I have my pressure is 4, okay, and it's atmospheres. Temperature is 37, but we know it has to be in Kelvin, so you're going to add 273. So your temperature then is going to be 310 Kelvin. So what R do I need? Look at your pressure. So the R I'm going to use is 0 0.0821. So now we can just plug it in, and again, we can rearrange it. Since I'm looking for volume, you could say volume is nRT over P, or you can just use PV equals nRT and then rearrange. It's whatever you prefer of how to solve the algebra. But now I'm going to plug in what I know. The R is 0.0821, and it's 310 all over your pressure of 4. So then you just do the math and you get 3.98 liters. <clears throat> okay, number two. How many moles? So what am I looking for? So right there, how many moles? This tells you your N is your unknown. Volume, 2.2 liters. Your pressure is 1.2 atmospheres. Temperature, here's at 25 degrees. 
so it's 298 Kelvin. Now R, if you look at the R, what R do we need? It's going to be 0 0.0821 and I know that because that's my liters. This isn't telling you what to do with the math. All that this whole great big thing is, this is just the label. That's the units of R instead of just being one nice unit. And the reason, look at R, it has to cancel everything out. Because if I took the time and actually, so what am I looking for? N. So N is PV over RT. Let's plug our units in. So this would be 1.2 atmospheres. Your volume is 2.2 liters. So 0.0821, okay, and then we're going to write all of these liters, atmospheres, mole, Kelvin, over, we have our temperature, which is 298 Kelvin. So look at what starts happening. Then for units, Kelvin's cancel. When you flip these over, your atmospheres will cancel liters will cancel, leaving you with moles. So that's the purpose of all those units and that's why you have to make sure of your units. So then you just do the math. 1.12 times 2.2 divided by 0 0.0821 divided by 298. And you will get 0.11 moles. And the reason, look at my significant figures, 2 and 2. Okay, do number three. I'm going to skip number three. You do that one. Pay attention to your pressure. Let's just look at number four. So what volume? That's your unknown. Okay, now look at the difference here. I just gave you grams. So you still need moles, but what are you going to have to do? You're just going to have to convert your grams to moles using the molar mass of hydrogen. So we know that we have, if you look at that, pretty much the two significant figures, two and a half moles. Makes sense. Five grams divided by two grams. It takes two grams to be one mole. Um, pressure is 410. There's that kilopascals. And my temperature is 37. But we have to change it to Kelvin. So volume is NRT over P. So plug in what I know now, my 2.5 moles. Okay, which R are we going to need? Look at your pressure, KPA. So go up and look at your KPA. Which one has it? So I'll be using 8.31. Should have written this down. So the R I'm using is 8.31 because that's my KPAs. Temperature was 310. This is all over my pressure, which was 410 kPa's. So your volume, by doing all of this math, you should have gotten 16 liters. Okay, so I, we've left you two problems to do, and then we will just do more practice on the math, and we have two more um, types of formulas to look at. So just in this unit, if you notice, lots of math. So you just have to keep practicing to get them straight. We will see you in our next class.